Hey everybody, it's Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to go over another comment I received from a viewer. So I guess you can say this is the second episode of Hey eBuzz. Basically what it stated was, Hey eBuzz, Linux sucks on laptops. And I thought to myself, I primarily use Linux on laptops. What could be the problem? What is this Linux problem on laptops you speak of? Well, before you all get upset and start saying you know what the problems are, you can just go do a search. Linux performance on laptops is horrible. Why does Linux have poor battery life? Why is Linux running slow? Uh, and microphone issues. I got a laptop with microphone issues. I've done a video on that before. But what I'm going to do today is show you two ways to make your life with Linux on a laptop so much easier. I promise you. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the video and like what the channel is doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. The first thing I want to show you is about the mic issues. Now, if you don't have mic issues, I am so happy for you. You haven't had to dodge this bullet, but there are a lot of people out there that have installed Linux onto a laptop, and when they go to do any type of recording, their microphone sounds like this. Hey guys, my microphone's got problems. I'm on Linux. I can't fix it. Can somebody show me how to make my microphone sound better? If that's what your microphone sounds like after you've installed Linux on your laptop, pay close attention because I'm getting ready to show you how to fix it. It's simple, it's quick, it's easy. First thing you got to do on a laptop is come down here to your volume and click on it. It'll show you right off the bat which microphone you're using, okay? Generally speaking, if you're on a laptop, sometimes Linux will pick up the headphone stereo microphone and make that your primary when it boots up. So what you need to do is to go into here, okay? Click the microphone that you want to be your primary microphone. Once you've picked it and selected it, Go ahead and click back, shut that off, come over to your terminal. First thing you're going to want to do is put in pack MD, hit enter, and it's going to say welcome to Pulse Audio. Then all you got to do is type list dash sources, and it's going to give you a list of sources, whether they're inputs, outputs, all that good stuff, okay? It's going to give you an index, index zero, that's an output. And then you come down to index one. It's going to say ALSA input, hi-fi, HW, ACP source. You just scroll down and find your indexes. And what you're going to see is an index with an asterisk next to it. Once you have that index, you're going to want to go to the name that's under that index and highlight it. Right click and copy. And close out. Okay. Next thing I want you to do is open Firefox. And there's going to be a link in the description below for Pulse Audio. I'm going to give you this exact link. And when you click on it, you're going to see up here where it says microphone echo slash noise cancellation. You click on that link. It brings you here. Just leave that open and minimize. Go down here. Open up your text editor. I'm on Manjaro, so my text editor is Kate. Hit enter. And Kate is going to open up. Now you can go over here and do an open. We're gonna to go to root. You wanna to go to ETC, scroll down, find pulse. There's pulse. And then you've got default.pa. Click it, open. Now this is gonna open up. What I want you to do is scroll all the way to the bottom. Go all the way to the bottom. And at the bottom, Around line number 135, you're going to see make some devices default. Set default sync output, set default source input. Click at the end of input. Just click on your mouse and put a cursor there. Once you put your cursor there, hit enter twice. Then I want you to type in set dash default dash source. And once you do that, right click and paste what we just copied a while ago right there. You can see that I've got set dash default dash source space ALSA input PCI hi-fi HW ACP source. Yours won't be the exact same 
Whatever was under the asterisk that you've selected, highlight that, paste it right there. That is setting that microphone as the default. So when this system boots up from now on, it will use that as your default. You won't have to worry about it. Now, once you've done that, I want you to come down here to the end where it says dot include slash etc slash pulse slash default dot pa dot d. Click there, then go back to Firefox. Once you're back into Firefox, you're going to see where we were just a while ago, microphone echo slash noise cancellation. You'll come down here and you'll see three hashtags. Highlight that whole statement right there. That whole line of code, highlight it. Right click, copy, minimize, go back over to Kate. And as you can see, I've already pasted it in mine. So what you'll want to do right here is hit enter twice. When it comes down here to the cursor, just right click and paste. Okay. When you get done, you should see right here, set default source, and it'll have your default source. And then down at the bottom, it'll have enable echo slash noise cancellation. Once you see both of those, go up to file. You would click save. It'll ask you for your password. You click your password. And you're done. You can close out of that. And you can close out of Firefox. You have just fixed your microphone problems. When you reboot... What you will see is it will have it automatically selected and the echo and noise cancellation will block out anything in the background, plus makes your voice sound more crisper and clean, as you can tell. So you're going to go from this. Hey guys, my microphone doesn't have a lot of sound. Can you help me out? To this. It's a world of difference. And it's one thing that you can do that helps Linux not suck on a laptop. Number two, I always hear this. My laptop battery life is horrible on Linux. I went from getting five to six hours on my Windows install, and when I switch to Linux, I'm lucky to get two, two and a half hours. I'm going to show you a tool that wipes them all out. This is the only tool you need. I don't care what you're running, whether it be Ubuntu to Manjaro. I'm going to show you how to do it on Manjaro, but there's also tutorials on how to do it on Ubuntu and get it from the Snap Store. So, first things first, go to Firefox, and I'm going to click on Auto CPU. I'll include this address below in the description, but it's called Auto-CPU Freak, F-R-E-Q. And you scroll down, why do I need Auto CPU Freak? It kind of goes through it. What you gotta understand is with Windows, Windows is, has things built in to optimize that hardware, to make it run at its best, okay? Linux does the same thing, but it's power hungry. And there's just little tools that we can add to kind of help us out in that scenario. And this is one of those tools. Features, monitoring, it does base system information, CPU frequency, CPU usage, CPU temperature, battery state, system load, CPU frequency scaling, governor, and turbo boost, battery state, CPU usage, CPU temperature, system load, now you can get it in the Snap Store. You can install it from Source. It's available in the ARU. I'm going to walk you through how to do it on Manjaro. Now, if you're using a different distro that isn't ArchBase, like I said, you can go up and get it through here. But what we're going to do real quick is go over here, add and remove software, move this over. And what you're going to want to look for is Auto-CPU Freak. Comes up right there. You can see it's in the official repositories. I've already got it installed. All you have to do is install it. Install that real quick and I'll tell you what we do next. Now, if you're on Arch, right here where it says AUR package, Arch slash Manjaro Linux, and a lot of things you'll find online will tell you to run auto CPU freak install. Don't do it. It's already installed. What you need to do is come down here, run system CTL start auto CPU freak. That will start the service. Okay. You can run system CTL status auto CPU freak to see the status of the service. And I recommend this next system CTL space enable space auto dash CPU freak. The reason you want to run that is that service will persist across your reboots. 
So if you install it today, run that. When you shut your laptop down, the next time you boot into it, the service will automatically run in the background. Okay. Now, once you do that, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Like I said, I'll include that link in the description below. You can come over here to check and verify that it is running in the background. So let's open terminal. I'm going to go ahead and do auto CPU freak space double dash stats. Hit enter. And right now, because I am on battery, I'm in a power save governor. And then average temp of my cores is 40.5 degrees Celsius. And it also tells me up here what frequency I'm running at. You can see these are a lot lower than they usually are. And it gives you a max for your frequency and gives you a minimum. It tells you all your cores, but it's running in the background and it will refresh every five seconds. Now to have it stop refreshing, all you have to do is hit control C. And now it's still running, but it's just not giving you the stats that it's running. Now let's say you're on a laptop and you have it plugged in. I'm going to plug it in real quick. Okay, now I'm going to run the same thing I just ran. And now you can see it went from power save governor to performance governor because I'm plugged in. Okay, and you can also see that my frequency went from 1400 up to 2100. So now that it's plugged in and it's got more power, Auto CPU Freak is utilizing that power to make everything run just a little bit cleaner and a little bit faster. You can see the CP usages went down. Total system load has went down. Now the temp of all the cores has went up a little bit. But you will have that sometimes with smaller laptops where the battery is closer to things and it starts warming up. You will see a temperature change there, but it's nothing to worry about. And you may even hear your fans pick up a little bit. Nothing to concern yourself with. But there are two ways right there to make Linux not suck on laptops. If either one of these tips helped you out today, please leave a comment below. Please do me a favor before you go. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and like what the channel's doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.